How's it do, everybody? I'm Carl Caggiano, and you're either watching or listening to Watch Carl Do It Yourself. Now, I've been getting a buttload of mail lately asking me to do a do-it-yourself for a particular wearable item. Now, if it weren't for my mail guy threatening to haul off the last three months' worth of my unclaimed mail to the dead letter office, I never would have known. So, let me start off by giving the official do-it-yourself salute to whatever that guy's name is. I've never seen him in person. Let me just go through these letters here. I'll pick one at random. Oh, and by the way, another thanks to all of you uh, who went through the trouble to send me actual handwritten letters on paper. I'm still uh, waiting on that uh, password reset uh, from uh, tech support to get into my email. Okay, here, here, here we go. This, this one comes from Monty in Fort Winnebago, Wisconsin. Now, Monty writes, Hey, Carl, this pandemic sure sucks, but the medical experts keep saying it's safe to leave the house if I wear... A mask. Can you show me how to make one at home? <laughs> Pandemic. Hey, that's what I call a visit from the mother-in-law too, Monty. <laughs> I don't blame you for wanting to uh, lay low and hide your face. <laughs> okay, that's a funny joke. All right, let's 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 pick a real one, though, here. Ah, that's it. Okay, here we go. Vanessa from Modesto, California writes, I love your show, Carl. It's helped me stay sane during the lockdown. Oh, that poor woman must live in earthquake country. Uh, reading on, uh, all the online shops are out of face masks to help prevent the spread of disease. Can you show us how to make one with simple, everyday household materials? <laughs> you know, I bet you Monty and Vanessa are in cahoots, you know? <laughs> what are the odds of two people asking for such a random... Let, let, me, let, me, just, let me just pick a different one here. Here we go. Uh, no, that's, that's another one about masks and... Okay, we got, we got, uh, Perdeep in Sweetwater, Texas says, Carl, the virus has devastated my community. I need a good man. What the hell? Janine Ocalo, Florida. Packs of wild dogs roam the empty streets, scavenging for the dead among us. They're all like this. Holy shit. Uh, Gladys, honey, uh, how long was I working in the garage on the cabriolet? I'm watching the wheel. Oh. Okay, well, oh, hey, here's today's paper. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Oh, sweet Christ, on a flaming unicycle, this can't be happening. Oh. Okay, well, uh, it looks like uh, there's a viral pandemic uh, taking place in, um, uh, globally, and this has been happening for several uh, months now while I was uh, busy in the garage. Um, well... Uh, never mind. The, the show must go on. <clears throat> so, today on Watch Carl Do It Yourself, I'm going to show you how to make a face mask that will um, protect you from becoming infected by a terrible virus. Meanwhile, minimizing the chances of being a vector for transmission yourself. The first thing uh, we're going to need is an old hand towel, or failing that, uh, five ankle socks. Uh, next, you get a pair of scissors, some glue, and... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's nothing but pestilence and certain death out there. Why the hell would anyone want to go outside? What the hell is wrong with you? Janine, Pradeep, Vanessa, Monty, here's my instructions for you. Put down what you're doing, turn off the TV, put down the phone, and hold in a lasting embrace the person nearest you. For now is the time for us to acknowledge that every life is but a mere spark leaping off the bonfire of time, soon to be snuffed out of existence in a chance act as chaotic and arbitrary as that which produced that tiny twinkle in the first place. Know that we, and only we, give meaning to life, and that love is an end unto itself. For love is the only... Carl, the picture's got out! Come fix it! For Christ's sakes, Gladys, I'm doing the show!
Howdy, ciao, what's the crack, and how hops it, everyone? This is the very first ever episode of What We Do Is What We Do, and I am your very own host, Christian Huey. Hold for applause. Uh, some of you may know me from other podcasts, uh, present and future, such as Chicken Fried Radio and All You Ever Think About Is Sparks. Um, this show is going to be different from both of those. So, sure, I may sneak in a lame sketch or a song or a monologue, epilogue or a catalog, a footslog, a drainage clog, I don't know. But the meat of this show is interviews. But I'm a vegetarian, you say. Relax. It's only an expression. There's no meat involved. Unless, of course, you count the electrical meat of the human brain. You see, on what we do is what we do. I want to know what makes people tick. Uh, most of you listening right now, you probably don't, hopefully, don't need to forage, gather, hunt, or toil 24-7 just to sustain your own life or those of your family members. Of course, you know, with the uh, lockdown uh, having taken over our lives in the last few months, maybe you do. Uh, but hopefully, even if you do, you have hobbies, passions, uh, activities or pastimes that you indulge in, not to pay the bills, but because they give your life meaning. Maybe you do what you do because you can't imagine not doing it. I get that. Uh, maybe your something is some kind of artistic expression or a community project or something you should frankly keep to yourself. It's whatever, you know. So uh, I'm going to have a different interview guest on each episode, and then they will give me, hopefully, the lowdown on just what it is that they do, and why they love it so much. <gasps> but first, a homework assignment. Doesn't that sound like fun? You don't really technically have to, but I would love to hear from you, and I always practice what I preach. Like today, for example, I would like to hear what you, yes you, have done or learned since the global quarantine began that changed life as we know it forever. I'll go first. Ready? <clears throat> I learned how to sing a cappella renditions of the background music to every stage of the 1989 NES game Mega Man 2. And here's a sample. See, man of my word. Uh, now it's your turn. What's something you've achieved or learned to do during this horrible moment in human history? You can write to me at ChristianCHuey at gmail.com. That's C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N-C-H-U-E-Y at gmail.com. Or you can let me know on the What We Do Is What We Do official Facebook page. And uh, I'm also on Twitter at, at Christian Huey. My guest today is Mr. Dario Western from Brisbane, Australia, by way of Manchester, England. Besides being a fellow fan of the band Sparks, shameless plug for my other show, please listen to all you ever think about is Sparks, Dario is both a musician and a committed naturist. Now, I will let Dario explain for himself exactly what a naturist is and what's important to them, as well as um, he'll describe his music career. And now. Mr. Dario Western. So, happy Easter to you. Yeah, happy Easter to you too, yeah. man. So, how's it going so far? I assume, like um, the rest of the world, you're not doing much out of doors. No, I've uh, been a homebody for many years anyway, so I'm not mm -hmm. really too bothered by this whole uh, pandemic. Same. Yeah, I, I can absolutely relate. <laughs> I, 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 now I'm doing the right thing. I'm, I'm actually getting plaudits for doing what I what used to be considered a, um, asocial. Um, well, thanks so much for uh, for volunteering to be um, my first interview subject in my non sparks uh, podcast. Well, I guess we'll, we'll just we'll just start start with yourself. Um, uh, if, if you don't mind, just to your, introduce yourself and where you live. Okay, yes. Uh, my name is Daria Weston. I live in uh, Fortitude Valley in uh, Brisbane, uh, Australia. I've uh, been a Sparks fan since um, 
around uh, 1974, but I didn't get into them properly until I was 17 in 1988 and uh, have been uh, hooked ever since I bought uh, Kimono My House and uh, Want That Sucker. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Two, two, uh, two gold choices. So I read on your uh, Facebook uh, bio there that you are a Mancunian. You're not a native Australian? No, I was born in Withington in Manchester, but um, I uh, emigrated to Australia in 1982 um, because of a lot of uh, racial uh, rights and uh, unemployment that was going on in England at ah. the time. Um, yeah, blacks and um, Asians, especially the uh, Indians and Pakistanis, were getting uh, beaten up wow. by skinheads. And uh, there was um, England had its uh, highest peak of unemployment um, when the Thatcher government uh, right. came into power in my uh, Dad got sick of it all, and he decided to uh, move us to Australia, where my uh, mother's family was uh, and still is uh, based. Wow, that's wow, that's that's an incredible story. So, how was it? How was it different uh, culturally making the move to uh, to Australia? Um, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was a bit difficult at first. I mean the. Um, the, the, I found the Mancunians, uh, you know, to be like, uh, you know, were very, very friendly and mm. um, and uh, they were sort of like a uh, very sort of digging of each other and all that kind of thing. The Australians, I, it took me a while for them to, for me to warm to them because they're much more sort of uh, harder natured people. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, by, um, sorry, by 1985, um, yeah, I'd sort of uh, settled in and I uh, didn't feel homesick anymore. Oh, great! Yeah, I've I've uh, I've heard them occasionally referred to the um, to the to the Southerners of the rest of the world. You know, like in, in the United States, and so particularly in, in Texas, where I'm from and where I live. You know, we we have kind of a reputation for being um, oh uh, how, how to how to put it um, a little a. a a little rough around the edges, but but also in an outdoorsy sort of way. I mean, we're the cowboys, you know. Oh, yeah, no, I've uh, I've got a got a friend who lives in, which well, she's from uh, Texas originally, and uh, she lives in Florida. And uh, yeah, she um, she and I uh, had a good online uh, friendship for a number of years. But uh, yeah, she sort of uh, retired a bit from internet life. Yeah, I don't blame her. So um, let's talk about naturism. Because that's what started mm. this this conversation. Um, so you uh, you you're a musician, of course, and you were in a band. And I checked out some of your songs, uh, and you have a lot of songs that are devoted to uh, naturism and what it's all about. So I'm just going to let you describe what naturism means to you and why it's such a big part of your life. Okay, um, excuse me a minute. <coughs> yeah. I uh, first uh, became aware of naturism when I was uh, eight years old. Uh, the BBC uh, put a documentary out in uh, January 1979 called Let's Go Naked, which you can uh, watch on um, YouTube. And it was all about the uh, the naturist scene in um, England and France and uh, Europe and a, a little bit of America. Um, the naturist scene was uh, starting to uh, take hold um, in mainstream Britain in 1979 when um, a uh, – Beach was uh, was uh, going to be legalized for nude recreation out at uh, Brighton uh, the following year, yeah. And um, I didn't get into it until uh, 1990 when I went to a uh, swim party in uh, Brisbane on my own, and mm -hmm. um, it took me about uh, 20 minutes to just sort of like uh, you know suss out the scene to see how everyone was interacting, and then I uh, just got my gear off and. Uh, yeah, did a few laps around the pool, and uh, yeah. yeah, haven't uh, really uh, turned back since. Right. Okay. And it's and clearly it's be become a, a very big part of your life. I, I, I've had a little bit of exposure to it uh, myself. There's there are a couple of communities not terribly far from where I live here in Austin, Texas, that um, yeah that are you know clothing optional. The naturist part, but you know the, 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 those of us who are not in the know, I think still. Uh, still make the mistake. We still call it nudist, which I, I'm sure is probably a not a favored term. Uh, it doesn't bother me either way. Okay. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, I, I know of the um, the hippie hollow uh, clothing optional uh, make in Oxen, Texas. Yes. Okay, you know hippie hollow. Yes. Okay, so I've I visited hippie hollow and a place called the Star Ranch. 
uh, which is uh, mm. nearby. And, um, you know, and li- like a lot of people, I was initially a little apprehensive, you know, because, I mean, it's the, the culture in which we're raised, you know, you, 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 it's, it's shameful to take off your clothes in front of strangers and in public. And uh, so I wanted to, you know, to sample that experience and, and see what it was like. And it was really, really liberating. And I got to tell you, my guard dropped probably within the first hour of just interacting with people and we're all at the same level. Yeah. Um, I don't really subscribe to this um, this uh, philosophy that naturism makes us all equal because uh, we all come from uh, different uh, classes and different backgrounds. Mm-hmm. You know, the only thing that we've got we really have in common is that we just choose to wear no clothes. I mean, mm-hmm. You know, naturism is not the same as uh, socialism or communism or anything like that. But, um, yeah, um, you you can't tell if uh, somebody is like a uh, rubbish collector or a doctor or a lawyer or whatever Mm -hmm. because um, they're not wearing clothes. You have to uh, ask them what they do for a living, you know, to find out. So what what is – what do you think is so um, valuable about uh, naturism when and when you're talking about your so in a community your social interactions yeah um i think uh, that the best thing is that it's it's quite easy to uh, read another person's uh, body language you know you you can tell instinctively how they're how they're feeling and all that kind of thing with the way they you know that they're, they're, they're um, sitting or the, the way they're moving or the way they're they're holding themselves and all that kind of thing and um, when they've got clothes on, it's not so it's not so easy to try and suss out how they're how they're feeling. Yeah, that, that's what I. And the other thing is, it feels much better to do certain things naked, like uh, you know, uh, swimming or playing sports or having a massage or whatever. You know, it doesn't uh, feel uh, feel the same. You know, when you when you're fully dressed. Right. So when uh, you know when when you are going about. Uh, naked. I mean, uh, clearly, you know, you you live in a you you live in a big city uh, where you know going out and about. Uh, let's forget about the pandemic for a moment. But going out out and about mm. without clothes on, uh, uh, you know, obviously would would be frowned upon. So, where are, do you belong to a community? Do you where? How do you engage in this? Okay, I run a community on um, several platforms, including uh, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook called uh, Brisbane Naturists. I've had it since about uh, 2007 or 2008. And um, the, the Facebook uh, yeah, community group has got uh, 414 uh, people, both um, males and uh, females alike on it. And uh, I've also had uh, meetups at my uh, place as well as at friends' places in uh, Brisbane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I live in um, the Fortitude Valley, which is a um, inner city suburb. So uh, it's quite uh, easy for people to get to my place, and um, yeah, we do stuff like uh, have uh, have uh, DVD days where we like uh, watch uh, naturist uh, films and uh, shows, and we have uh, things like uh, body and face painting, uh, board games, yeah. uh, stuff that's just uh, very basically fun and uh, can appeal to people of all ages. You know, we're we're not uh, we're not snobby or anything like that. Does it ever surprise you the the types of uh, people that that you meet who are into the naturist way of life? Um, not really, uh, because they they come from like a pretty average uh, cross section of uh, society. But uh, yeah, you do meet some interesting people. I've been to a uh, festival called uh, Comfest, which is usually held around uh, Easter and. Uh, and in the past, uh, during Christmas and New Year as well, out in uh, southern New South Wales, and they get a lot of uh, like a bohemian uh, artistic uh, type people that mm-hmm. go to it, uh, especially uh, from America and uh, the UK and Europe. Uh, some of them especially just uh, visit Australia purely to just go to the festival, and that's about it. Uh, let's talk about your music for a moment. Uh, so you you hmm. are a musician. Uh, how long have you been playing music? And I I wh- wh- what all do you play? I know you play the, the guitar. Yeah, I play guitar. I can also play uh, keyboards and uh, trombone and violin, and I'm also a singer songwriter. I uh, got into music when I was about uh, five years old. Um, I learned uh, to play piano and. 
then uh, when I uh, when I reached uh, high school in Australia, my uh, mother uh, became a music teacher. She taught uh, piano to um, a number of uh, kids um, uh, when I was in high school, and um, I um, I also took up uh, doing um, music exams. And uh, when I left uh, school, I uh, did a course in uh, sound engineering at the Brisbane uh, Conservatory of uh, Music. Have you been part of the uh, the the Brisbane? Uh, larger music scene. Have you been playing in many bands? Not counting. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, uh, I, I played in a band called uh, Blackened uh, during the nineties with my uh, then girlfriend uh, Julie Hepburn. Uh, mm-hmm. We we were uh, around from uh, nineteen ninety five till uh, nineteen ninety nine, and uh, yeah, we played um, we played a number of uh, local gigs, and uh, we had uh, some stuff uh, recorded at the. Uh, School of Audio Engineering and uh, Shockwaves uh, Radio. Um, then after we split up, I uh, took to managing a garage uh, R&B band uh, called the BC Men, who are still around today. Oh, cool! And uh, the lead, yeah, the lead singer's um, yeah mother's boyfriend uh, at the time was also a naturist, and uh, he was also into tantra and meditation and stuff like that, which I found quite interesting. Now, was that? Was 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 that the moment where your love of music and your interest in naturism uh, collided, or is that just a coincidence that he happened to be a naturist? Um, it's sort of uh, it's sort of uh, just uh, gradually uh, melded into into one thing. Um, yeah, before that, I I kept my music and uh, naturist um, endeavors apart, and um, yeah, in two thousand and one, I. I got uh, the first lineup for the band uh, Laissez Faire mm-hmm. together um, after watching uh, some of these um, music uh, reality shows like um, uh, what was it called Pop Stars and Australian Idol. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bands were more about uh, you know uh, fashion and style than they were about uh, musical substance. So I wanted to get a girl band together that was going to be the uh, total antithesis of the likes of uh, Bardo and uh, Scandalous, who uh, won the uh, shows. I like it. That's true. And what? Yeah. What? What better way to completely thumb your nose or or uh, give the middle finger to this idea of style when nobody's wearing anything? <laughs> there is. There's, 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 <laughs> that's there's, right. Yeah. There's. There's nothing there. Uh, that's it. So tell me about the. So it's you and two or three ladies. So who 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 is in the uh, who is in laissez faire? Yeah, I've uh, had a number of. Um, I've had a number of uh, girls in uh, past uh, lineups. Uh, they were just uh, like uh, pickup members um, who I recorded with on uh, MySpace and um, YouTube in 2006 and then 2013. Um, at the moment, I'm uh, building up a new lineup with a friend of mine, uh, Naomi, who uh, she was raised in a um, in a nudist uh, community in Melbourne wow. in the um, early 70s, and uh, she went on uh, to become a uh, burlesque dancer and uh, singer and bassist and uh, choreographer um, in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Wow. That's that's quite a pedigree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, so she's very much on um, on the same page as me as to uh, what, uh, what we want to achieve uh, artistically and aesthetically. Yeah. Nice. Uh, that's great. So I, as I said, I was... Um, Watching a couple of your uh, videos here for for uh, laissez faire, and mm. I'm listening to 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 naked here, and uh, definitely, very firmly, it's it's a song about body positivity. Was this did, was did did you did you write these lyrics or was this from the girls or whose idea was? No, uh, all the songs were written by myself. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. <coughs> I originally envisioned Naked to be like uh, some new age ballad back in the late uh, 90s. Um, if you remember bands, uh, the artists uh, Enya and uh, Clannad. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, Enya and Clannad, yeah. Yeah, sort of like them and uh, Mike Oldfield. And then I thought I'd um, I'd rock it up and, um, yeah, turn it into like an all, all out, uh, you know, a rocker with uh, the sort of like uh, the 70s and 80s uh, new wave, you know, kind of uh, beat to it. Yeah, that's definitely the uh, the vibe that, that I'm getting from this. It's it's kind of amusing now to think of this sounding like an Enya song, just uh, with the, with a Celtic twist, but a, a wash and uh, and gentle synthesizers. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's it's a great song, uh, and and of course it's a um, 
you know, it's it's a really um, it's a really val- valuable message. Are most of your most of your songs in, in laissez faire similar in that vein that they have this this uh, message of, of body positivity? Um, it's not just about body positivity. I've also written a song about um, environmentalism, also songs about um, yeah, sexual harassment and uh, yeah. some about uh, feminism. And uh, there's even one about um, accepting the uh, LGBTIQ uh, community as well. Okay, so that brings up some other interesting questions that, that I have is this kind of, you know, you hear the word intersectionality all the time these days, is how uh, mm. naturism uh, intersects with, like you said, uh, with, with feminism. Uh, it, it would seem to me that th- th- there may be feminists out there who may, who may be um, a little, what's the word I'm looking for, who, who, who may be a little afraid of the naturist community because of the types of people that there are, that they fear may be in there. Is there apprehension uh, among feminists in the, in the, to enter the naturist community? Well, feminists are just as much as diverse as the rest of the community. Um, there are feminists uh, who totally embrace naturism, and um, in the recent years, uh, they've uh, they've started to embrace it again with the whole uh, Free the Nipple movement. Um, I'm friends with one of the girls who organises uh, Free the Nipple uh, picnics in uh, Brisbane every year and stuff, and I'm trying to get her into the band as well because uh, she does uh, a bit of uh, singing and uh, performance art. Nice. Very good. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, feminists... Um, Feminists who are naturists uh, embrace it because there's no telling them uh, how to how to dress, how mm-hmm. to be, how to look, or anything like that. And they they find that very liberating. And right. um, and they also uh, the free the nipplers, um, you know, believe that if uh, guys can um, you know can, can bear their chests out on the beaches or in uh, other places like uh, parks or sports centres or whatever, well, when why can't girls uh, do the same thing as well? Uh, Marley Cyrus. Uh, you know, also said in the interview that she didn't understand the double standards when the press uh, lambasted her for uh, sunbathing and swimming uh, topless with her boyfriend uh, over in um, the Caribbean or wherever she was. I mean, well, he's he's topless as well, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. said uh, she said that guys can get their tits out on the beach, so I don't see why girls can't do the same as well. I, I don't get the double standard. Yeah, that is that is quite a double standard. It's it's interesting that you mentioned that because. Um, one of the quirks of uh, of Austin, uh, Austin, Texas, is is that um, there is no double standard. Luckily, in, in in our city here, so a woman is actually free to walk around uh, with her nipples out, which is refreshing. And if you go down yeah. to uh, um, Barton Springs, which is our our natural springs where uh, pe- people swim, you you will see. You know, uh, w- women you know freely walking around without tops on, which, which surprises visitors who are not accustomed to that. Um, but anyway, I I, I, I digress. Uh, so <laughs> uh, that's that's really that's that's very it sounds very empowering uh, what you're saying about uh, uh, feminists and the uh, naturist movement, um, and also you uh, you were talking about uh, LGBT. Uh, people in the naturist movement, and do you find that they're starting to uh, have a voice as well? Yeah, there are a lot of uh, gay and uh, bi and lesbian, uh, yeah, guys and girls uh, who are naturists as well. Um, yeah, p- probably the guys a bit more uh, because, um, yeah, they find that uh, naturism isn't, isn't uh, you know, a beauty contest or whatever, mm-hmm. or, or whatever else, you know, and they. Yeah. They're not so uh, hung up about the sizes of their of their penises or whatever that um, yeah. guys in the straight community are. Yeah, good point. <laughs> let, let me ask you this. Okay, so um, so there are so, so you, you know you 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 live in the city. You don't um, you're not a resident of a naturist community. So you have to find events, um, shared events where you can get together with other people in in, in the. Uh, local uh, community is it uh, that that's correct like beaches that's uh, or that's pretty much correct yeah. um, i have uh, organized uh, the world naked uh, bike ride uh, on and off uh, since uh, 2007 which oh. is a um, environmentalist uh, demonstration where we uh, we paint our bodies up you know with uh, slogans and stuff uh, uh, protesting against um, the overdependence on the fossil fuels as well as um, 
the destruction of the natural environment and promoting stuff like, uh, you know, uh, public nudity as well as uh, sustainable living um, and uh, green issues like, uh, you know, the greenhouse effect and whatnot. Um, I also, uh, yeah, promoted the event in a um, video by a Brisbane uh, punk band called uh, Violent Soho, who've uh, got a bit of a following over in America and uh, Canada and the UK. I did a song uh, for them called uh, In the Isle, where I was uh, running around Brisbane wearing just a tan-coloured uh, G-string and um, mm. handing out these dummy World Naked Bike Ride uh, posters. That's a lot of great causes. That's that's yeah. That's a lot of fingers and 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 a lot of very uh, important pies, so to speak. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, let me uh, so uh, back to your your band. Uh, well, first off, uh, do you have any songs yet about any of those other uh, causes, such as the you know, greenhouse gases or any any of those other environmental issues yet? Are they wor- working your way into your music? Yeah. I've uh, written a song called "The uh, Age of Innocence," which, um, yeah, is um, is uh, partially about environmentalism, and uh, yeah, that's a sort of a, like a new age uh, ballad. Cool. And uh, I got the idea the 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 title from a book by uh, the late uh, David Hamilton called "The Age of Innocence," where he had uh, photographed like a lot of uh, uh, young girls uh, naked on beaches in uh, California and France and all that kind of thing in soft focus where they were sort of like, you know, dancing around on beaches, you know, wearing uh, wearing white cloths and all that kind of thing. It was really nice. Hmm. Yeah. And it inspired me to write, the, to write the song. Yeah. Can we hear that yet? Is that anywhere? Our... Have you recorded that? Um, on the internet yet? Unfortunately. Unfortunately not, but I'm uh, working on it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll play, be, be, be sure to let me know because I'll, I'll, I, I know I'll be wanting to check that out. Yeah, well, um, yeah. Especially since you got my, um, my, my interest peaked uh, when you had mentioned Enya earlier. Uh, some of the, the first uh, piano pieces I ever learned to play as a uh, young teenager was Enya. I, I, yeah. I'll admit freely. Uh, are, do you uh, – back to laissez-faire, are, do you guys play many gigs out and about? I understand that it is probably a challenge if you choose to go naked. Um, well, I have uh, played at, um, at some uh, new disturbed uh, communities on the north side of Brisbane called uh, Balkaz in Kabulcha and um, Pacific Sun Friends in uh, Donnybrook for their uh, open market days uh, from Above Natural. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've uh, performed both uh, dressed and naked uh, for them alike. So, yeah, they're, um, yeah, they're both uh, yeah, really good uh, communities and, um, and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy uh, – yeah, yeah, playing uh, playing nude at them when I can. Yeah. Have you uh, have you guys recorded uh, an album or anything yet, or is that in the works? Um, it's in the works. Um, yeah, quite recent. Most recently, a uh, a very well known uh, musician friend of mine uh, died of the COVID nineteen uh, wow. virus uh, a couple of uh, weekends ago in New York City, and I uh, wanted to um, yeah record a uh, rap rock. Uh, track uh, with uh, Laissez Faire as a uh, bit of a dedication to him. Wow, that's a fantastic, very... Yeah, he awesome was um, Alan Merrill from uh, Arrows, and he uh, he gained uh, worldwide uh, fame for writing the song um, I Love uh, Rock and Roll. And, oh, my uh, gosh. I've, uh, yeah, yeah, he died. Uh, he died a couple of Sundays ago, just after a gig he was doing in New York, and uh, it was a pretty horrible death. His uh, wife... I uh, wrote an article for it uh, in The Australian, and I was just pretty shocked uh, when I read it, and I'm still in shock about it today. Oh, yeah. you're, okay. As, as you're saying this, Dario, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just remembering now that I had, I had come across a, an article uh, about his passing. It's, it was it's CNN. It was, it was a major international <coughs> um, Yeah, and they, it was. So you had, a, you had a connection to him. You knew, you knew Alan Merrill. Yeah, I, we'd been friends on uh, Facebook uh, for over 10 years. Um, yeah, when uh, I got to know him when I was, um, I think I was managing uh, Susie Quattro's uh, fan group on Facebook. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was a member. They were both uh, good friends because they were on the same label, uh, Rack Records, in the 1970s. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he and I got uh, got chatting about the music business uh, when um, – 
you know, I wanted to find out more about the song I Love Rock and Roll and mm. uh, all that kind of thing. He said that his favourite version of it was actually not Joan Jett, but Britney Spears, because he never mm. got any uh, royalties out of uh, Joan ah. Jett's version when uh, she first recorded it, because there was a lot of uh, corporate uh, dicking about in the music industry at the time. Yeah, I'm sure. Wow, boy, he really missed a gravy train. That's a shame. Well, I'm... I'm yeah. Hopefully he got he got something from from Britney's version. Well, I, oh yeah, yeah, he yeah, yeah, he made millions out of it oh, and um <laughs> yeah, I also did another song of his called uh, Touch Too Much which um uh, was a hit for uh, Arrows in uh, Britain, and it went uh, to number one in South Africa and wow. also hit the charts in Belgium. And he was one of the first to comment about it when I uh, put up a version of me uh, rehearsing it uh, on YouTube. Wow! Congratulations. Yeah, so he he always uh, sort of looked out at me, look, looked out for me when I was um, when I was uh, on a creative down or whatever else. Uh, you know, he'd uh, yeah, give me he'd give me advice on the music business and uh, my playing and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I'm really sorry that you had to lose uh, such an influential figure, and I guess you know we've as we as uh, as as music listeners, we've you know we've all suffered a loss today. I'm really sorry to hear about that. Yeah, I've uh, written a song called uh, "Hey Little Boy," which is uh, based on my love rock and roll, and it's about. Um, uh, toxic uh, fatherhood uh, with the, the stereotyped way that um, a number of the way uh, that a number of their dads raise their sons to be in the, both the Western and non-Western world alike. Now, is that something that has any personal resonance for for you? No, um, my, my 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 dad has uh, always uh, raised me to be a pretty open-minded person and okay. uh, all that kind of thing. And uh, but uh, there are a lot of fathers, you know, who. Uh, raise their sons uh, to be like, you know, pretty stoic and uh, mm -hmm. to uh, be uh, intolerant and uh, close-minded and stuff like that. Sure. And, you know, and, and sexists, I'm sure, would... Oh, would sexist, yeah, line. definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, Misogynist. Uh, one of them. Yeah, mm. certainly. There's a, lot, there's a lot of it going on in Australia, but uh, it's starting to, uh, I think, die down a bit now that um, I've uh, got a number of, uh, yeah, uh, lady friends who are... Uh, feminist activists and models who are calling out these uh, sleazoids um, on their Facebook pages. That's great. Well, I'm, I'm happy to hear that there's so many people getting uh, em empowered over there for a lot of these causes, not just for naturism, but for the environmental causes that you're part of and feminism as well. Um, yeah. Is there anything else? Uh, I'm, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm, I'm going to, uh, uh, let you go for the evening and we can pick this up uh, another day but is there anything that you wanted listeners to know about um naturism or about your music that you haven't had a chance to talk about yet yes um i've uh, got a, uh, a video uh, on uh, vimeo for naked which was uh, banned on youtube um i originally put it up on um uh, 2003, uh, just after I recorded it. And uh, have you heard of uh, the, the Brisbane band, the Veronicas, at all? I have not heard of the Veronicas from Brisbane. Oh, yeah, they uh, they had a uh, top 20 hit in America with uh, Untouched in, I think it was 2008 when they were with uh, Warners. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, in 2013, when I put the song up, it uh, it overtook uh, one of their songs, uh, "Cross My Heart," in the popularity stakes for a while. <laughs> um, it got over one hundred and fourteen thousand hits with no record company uh, support, with no uh, publishing company, no radio airplay, no nothing. Well, how do you think? And then, uh, yeah, it just how? went viral. I, I I don't know how, but um, somebody uh, falsely reported the video to be uh, pornography, and mm. it got uh, ripped down from YouTube. I tried appealing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, YouTube uh, would not reinstate it, so uh, I had to um, I had to sort of download it off another site and mm -hmm. uh, put it up onto uh, Vimeo dot com. Okay, I got you. So this is why we're directing everyone to to Vimeo because it it, it is still playing on Vimeo, but but not YouTube. It's it's on Vimeo. It's uh, had about uh, four and a half thousand uh, hits, and there's been no dramas because with uh, Vimeo. Uh, they're a lot more open-minded about mm -hmm. nudity than uh, YouTube is. YouTube is uh, is a bit more inconsistent. Yeah, yeah, they are inconsistent. So the uh, the band is uh, Laissez Faire. That's L A I S S 
E Z or Z, uh, Fair F A Y R E, and the song is Naked N E K K I D. You can That's find it. that on on Vimeo. And uh, do you have a um, a website or is there a social media site or where's the best place where people might want to learn more about yourself and or your music? Okay, we've got a YouTube site, which is www.youtube.com slash user slash laissez-faire. There's uh, some interviews with me with uh, two of uh, the girls from Past Slime Up, uh, Amanda uh, Herdman and uh, Nova Ciara. And, uh, yeah, we we uh, had uh, played at uh, Balkaz, um yeah, just before the interview at uh, one of the uh, Free Beach uh, Association meetups. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Great. Uh, well, Dario, thank you so much for yeah. giving me um, some some of uh, your your time today on Easter Sunday that we're all spending safely indoors. And uh, yeah, no a, problems. Yeah, yeah, have a great rest of your day, and uh, I'm sure um, when when this is released, when I do actually launch this podcast, hopefully very soon. And I'll be, you know, um, people will be directed to uh, to check out uh, the music of uh, Laissez Faire over there on Vimeo yeah. and YouTube. Uh, you have a great day, Dario. Thanks so much, man. Thank you very much. See you later. And that's it. That's the show. That's our first show. There it is. Uh, I want to thank Dario for coming on to uh, said show. Uh, remember, his band is uh, L- uh, Laissez Faire, um, and that is spelled L. A I S S E Z dash F A Y R E. There, listen to Computer Girl. She spelled it for you. Uh, thanks for joining me on my maiden voyage with What We Do Is What We Do. Uh, do check out my other podcast. It's called All You Ever Think About Is Sparks, all about the band Sparks. If you don't know who they are, then eh, I'll tell you in the podcast. Uh, Before I go, I want to remind you all that uh, I want to have you, yes, you on this show. Uh, You got something that you do that gives your life meaning or at least keeps you from succumbing to the vast nothingness of existence? Drop me a line. Uh, Once again, you can email me at christianchuey at gmail.com or you can get me on Twitter at at Christian Huey, and of course, there's always Facebook as well. Uh, just uh, give it a Shotsky Trotsky. Until next time, this is Christian Huey telling you to stay well, wash your hands, hug a loved one if you can, if not, hug them virtually, and don't forget to call your mom. And now, because your urge to rock is a festering, here comes the music of Dario Westerin. This is Naked by Laissez Fair. This song is best enjoyed nude. <laughs> Drinks so-